This is Tradeflow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Tradeflow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. China's energy crisis deepened on Friday with coal prices hitting a record high as cold weather sweeps in and soaring gas prices prompting major energy companies to seek long-term deals with U.S. suppliers, sources told Reuters. Energy security has shot to the top of government agendas in Asia and Europe as shortages of coal and rocketing gas prices have triggered power outages and choked up factories supplying big-name brands such as Apple, just as the global economy reawakens from coronavirus restrictions. To shield consumers from soaring prices as winter approaches, European Union leaders look set to greenlight emergency measures by member states including price caps and subsidies, at a summit next week. Oil prices settled at a three-year high above $85 a barrel on Friday, boosted by forecasts of a supply deficit in the next few months as the easing of coronavirus-related travel restrictions spurs demand. Brent crude futures settled up 86 cents, or 1%, at $84.86 a barrel. Front-month prices, which touched their highest level since October 2018 at $85.10, hit a weekly rise of 3%, its sixth straight weekly gain. U.S. West Texas Intermediate WTI, crude futures rose 97 cents, or 1.2%, to $82.28 a barrel. There was up 3.5% on the week in an eighth consecutive weekly rise. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. China has issued a new batch of oil import quotas for independent refiners for 2021 that show total annual allowances were lower than last year a first reduction of import permits since these firms were allowed into the market in 2015. The latest batch of quotas for independent refiners was 14.89 million tonnes, according to the documents. That brings the total allowances for 2021 to 177.14 million tonnes, down from 184.55 million tonnes in 2020, said three trade sources and Chinese commodities consultancy JLC. The reduction in import quotas follows heightened government scrutiny of the refining sector this year over the trading of crude import quotas and tax evasion, as Beijing sought to curb inefficient fuel processing and cut emissions. China's energy crisis deepened on Friday as cold weather swept into much of the country and power plants scrambled to stock up on coal, sending prices of the fuel to record highs. Electricity demand to heat homes and offices is expected to soar this week as strong cold winds move down from northern China. Forecasters predict average temperatures in some central and eastern regions could fall by as much as 16 degrees Celsius in the next two to three days. Shortages of coal, high fuel prices and booming post-pandemic industrial demand have sparked widespread power shortages in the world's second-largest economy. Rationing has already been in place in at least 17 of mainland China's more than 30 regions since September, forcing some factories to suspend production and disrupting supply chains. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Silicon and zinc output cuts in Europe due to the power crisis are likely to slow the region's energy transition plans, with producers also weighing relocation of facilities for both the metals used in renewable energy, metal industry sources said. European power prices have rocketed this year mainly due to the rising price of natural gas used for power generation and heating, low renewable energy output and higher carbon prices. German baseload power for delivery next year recently reached a contract record of €177.24 Euros per megawatt hour MWH, while oil prices climbed to three-year highs around $85 a barrel as consumers switched fuels. Gold prices fell on Friday as a rebound in US bond yields and a surprise increase in September retail sales dented bullion's safe haven status. Spot gold fell 1.5% to $1,768.38 per ounce by 1.43 p.m. Eastern Time, 17.43 GMT. U.S. gold futures settled down 1.7% at $1,768.30. Gold has everything going against it. Real rates are rising, equities are higher, so is Bitcoin, said Philip Stribel, chief market strategist at Blue Line Futures in Chicago. 
U.S. retail sales unexpectedly increased in September, boosting equities and extending losses in risk hedge gold. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. For the first time in a year, corn prices in China's key Shandong hub this week have fallen to the same levels as wheat, leading some feed producers to switch back to using more of the yellow grain, traders and analysts said. Corn prices in key animal feeding hubs such as Shandong province had been trading at a rare sustained premium to wheat for most of the past year. That's because corn production hiccups and a drawdown in stocks last year led to a slide in supply that pushed domestic prices to record highs. Costly corn in turn spurred industrial corn users to look for alternatives, with some feedlots switching to using record volumes of feed-grade wheat. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.